Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We'll continue further in our uh, lecture series, and uh, many times in our uh, control theory as well, we'll need lot of uh, numerical methods on the way, especially with respect to nonlinear systems theory. The things are not available in closed form, so we have to go resort to that. And in linear systems, also remember that we need some operating point first before uh, we talk about a deviation dynamics, which we linearize and then. Uh, interpret that as linear systems. We will talk about linearization in one of those lectures later. Uh, I mean, uh, about the linearization uh, method uh, in a CS pool, and then we will see some of these concepts, other concepts also, uh, like uh, root finding and other things are useful in a uh, lot of applications actually. So, let us quickly review some of these uh, numerical methods that are uh, frequently. I mean uh, kind of required in our analysis and synthesis actually. So, we will first concept that comes to mind is uh, I mean first problem is linear equation solution. Suppose, you have x equal to v and remember we do not we know for sure that uh, if a is some rectangular and things like that uh, I mean a, a is a square matrix for which uh, a determinant of a is not 0 that means, a is non singular and v is not equal to 0 then x equal to a inverse v we know for sure. Okay. But, a, a inverse is adjoint of a by divided by determinant of a and that requires a lot of computation. We, we do not want to go to that definition all the time whenever that is required actually. Okay. Now, the question is where do we require this kind of solution in our control theory and one of that is you can uh, see some of these uh, uh, I mean some of these motivation part of it. Suppose, we want to find out something like a uh, like this, this is a typical equation x dot equal to x plus b u. Okay, and we let's say we divide this x into like control state and uncontrolled state. Like x c is control state, x n is uncontrolled state. Okay, and we divide it in such a way that it is like dimension of x c is equal to dimension of u. Okay, so if I just consider that upper portion of the equation, that means x c dot is equal to a one x plus b one u. Okay. Then I tell okay, this b 1 remember dimension of x c is equal to dimension of u that means b 1 is a square matrix now. Okay. Then I will probably try to find out what is my equilibrium condition that means, this x c dot is 0 right. If I take about the control state equilibrium and I want to interpret that as a forced equilibrium point that means, so my control activity is not 0 for that. So, I want to maintain that particular equilibrium point. Okay. And then what is my control required for that? It is also like what is called a stream control in aircraft actually. Like if your aircraft uh, flies steady and level, okay, you really require some sort of a, a trim moment because, because remember your uh, CG and CP are not at the same point. That means, there is a continuously there is a gravity related I mean this uh, aerodynamic uh, lift related moment which will act on the vehicle actually. Okay. If I if I just uh, tell that in a a uh, little small diagram. Okay, this is something like uh, there, and your CG will be somewhere here, and CP is somewhere there. Okay, so that means uh, this this particular thing will give us some sort of a moment about that actually. Okay, there is a turning moment sort of thing. So you want to cancel that by using something something like a equivalent moment actually. Okay, so that means you really require some sort of a small elevator deflection actually. Okay, so those trim control is actually I mean trim condition uh, is actually a forced equilibrium point in aircraft flying actually. And those of you cannot uh, relate uh, that, we will see that uh, a little later or that is very obvious also, it is not uh, too much. You can inter you can see that this problem from other example problems as well. Okay. So, what I am looking at? I am looking at some solution for a for something like uh, x c dot equal to 0. That means, the control state are operating under steady state actually. If I really want to find out what is my control necessary for that particular situation, then I can find a control action that way. Because remember, B is actually B one is actually non-singular, okay, square and non-singular. So I can take that way. So if I apply this control action, feedback control, then I'll assure that this happens to be zero. 
so that my my aircraft continues to fly at steady end level basically so that particular control is actually necessary for maintaining x dot 0 if x is h dot for example and u is delta e elevator deflection then this elevator deflection i have to compute it that way okay so obviously we require this type of solution now this is a1 of x is nothing but our b if you are going back to that this is our b and this a y is nothing but b1 actually in this case so we re we require this kind of solution i mean efficient ways of getting solution and, and things like that remember this control has to be applied online also that means we cannot afford to have lot of computational time getting wasted for computing this v1 inverse we don't want that actually okay so we want to have an efficient way of controlling i mean finding out this v1 inverse actually so coming back to that can you so this is the equation that we are asking and then we are observing that a inverse involves too many computations actually and roughly the computational complexity sense it requires n square into n factorial computations okay so that means if a is larger and larger and larger you are getting trapped in this computational complexity actually so we want to do it in an efficient way and one of that efficient way happens to be like uh, uh, gauss elimination which you'll see this in this class actually now this also this approach is not just uh, suffers from this computational headache i mean it also suffers from this condition this uh, other problems like uh, what is one thing is called ill conditioning okay now remember a inverse is nothing but adjoint of a divided by determinant of a right a inverse is equal to adjoint of a okay divided by determinant of a so if determinant of a goes zero okay, that means if you have a singularity is approaching okay you are approaching singularity then this is a serious problem actually okay you cannot just talk about division by that and things like that okay. And also remember, there will be like so many computations, and lot of computation. All of these computations will have small round of errors. And if there are too many computations, then round of errors can be large actually. Okay, so you don't want to do too many computation in any situation basically. The computers are always like finite uh, length you can take. I mean that uh, number and all that you will have finite digits only. So there will be round of errors all the time actually. Okay, so given a choice, you don't want to do too many computation actually. Now Gaussian elimination is a substitute to that, and instead of general things, we'll just take it as a small example and try to see what is going on here. So we have this kind of an equation, let's say three by three, okay, and then uh, okay, I mean all these, uh, okay, this is I think this is a small mistake again. The, all these are small x one, okay. This is x small x two. This is small x three. These are all elements actually. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this equation. Okay, what we want to do, we want to reduce this equation, whatever equation you have, in this A matrix, to be a upper triangular matrix actually. Okay, and we take advantage of the fact that if we multiply any row with uh, by any constant, and then take addition and subtract, add and subtract to other row, then the equation are not changed actually. Equation remains same. So then we take advantage of that thing, and then tell okay, uh, we want to reduce this matrix to a upper triangular form actually okay by taking advantage of this row transform i mean uh, uh, row properties actually like row multiplication addition things like that actually so what do you do actually okay so we'll try to see this this elements whatever you see here okay 1 1 0 this has to be all zeros actually now 1 0 is already there so i want to make sure that this zero also happens here okay or this zero happens here either way okay so now i see okay what do how do i do like i i multiply this particular thing by minus half one half and then add it up actually so that means i want to make sure that this becomes zero actually okay so if i do that then 2 by 2 is 1 then 1 minus 1 is 0 basically so that will pop up there and corresponding to that like say 2 minus uh, one half actually okay 2 minus one half is 3 by 2 like that actually and 0 will not change this so that that is the equation that i let leave with actually again 2 minus 1 half is 3 by 2 here okay. now you see that this is already 0 0 but i have to make sure that is also 0 okay so i will multiply this element this row by 2 by 3 this time and then subtract it actually okay so if i do that then it, uh, it uh, i'll end up with something like this actually okay. now this is a upper triangular matrix so i start looking at the equation from down to top actually okay so then uh, it turns out that okay minus one third is nothing but uh, minus one third of x3 is equal to 3 and hence x3 is 9 okay once i get x3 value 
then I put that but this particular is a uh, you know, I mean uh, is a function of x3 because this particular I said remember this ok let us do that this this particular thing has given me x3 equal to 9 ok. Now, this by go this equation rather the second second thing then I get 3 by 2 x2 ok plus 9 because x3 is 9 is equal to 3 by 2 ok. So, I, I try to solve this ok and if I try to solve this then x2 happens to be minus 5 x2. Okay. Now, I go back to the first one equation now first this this equation now ok and tell ok this is 2 x 1 plus x 2 ok x 2 is already minus 5. So, this is minus 5 equal to 1 right. Uh, okay. So, this uh, then 2 x 1 turns out to be 6 and x 1 equal to 3 ok that is why you get x 1 equal to 3 ok x 1 equal to 3, x 2 equal to minus 5 and x 3 equal to 9 okay. that is easy now. So, what is what are you doing here? You are somehow trying to eliminate this this so called pivotal elements and then make it 0 0 and then once you get an upper triangular matrix sort of thing here you try to look the equations from bottom to top because then they try to solve solve these equations straightforward manner actually ok. So, that is the Gaussian elimination. Now, Gauss elimination suddenly makes uh, this n square into n factorial operations this reduces to just this much operation actually remember this uh, this is actually something like a very high computational thing to a very low computational thing ok. Remember uh, n q is nothing but simply n not n factorial here and that will get multiplied with n square which is a lot of computation really. Yeah. So, obviously, it leads to a far less lesser computation and then hence it is kind of preferred actually especially especially in MATLAB command window ok if you some of you use that then you have a choice of using INV function INV into ok B which is like X or the same thing you can do that using A this slash S ok A slash B that will that will give you Gaussian elimination actually ok. So, instead of using the first one I will suggest that you use this this one actually A slash B. Okay. All right. All is uh, all is well here, but uh, you see some problems actually. Okay. What first problem is uh, this uh, Gauss elimination method will also encounter problems. Okay. If the pivotal element happens to be zero, actually. Okay. I mean, uh, the, the one of the diagonal elements becomes suppose it is this is zero now. Okay. Sorry, I will do it there. Suppose if you do this exercise and this happens to be zero. Now, no matter how much you multiply uh, and, uh, and try to add and subtract nothing will happen to this one actually you will not be able to do that actually. Okay. So, uh, in this those situations ok one easy way to do that ok is uh, just to exchange the rows actually ok. Suppose, if it if this one happens to be 0 here then you take uh, you take the entire equation you put it a third equation and this one is substituted as for a second equation you exchange the equations actually then proceed further that is that is the uh, idea there actually. Okay. So, this uh, Gaussian elimination is, uh, is a very standard practice now and lot of people make use of that again in MATLAB window is it I mean MATLAB command and MATLAB environment I suggest that you use uh, this this one ok. Anyway, now going back to uh, the next concept okay. what we saw there is uh, algebraic equation solution for linear systems that means, uh, we are talking about this is a linear sort of equation actually right A x equal to B what you what you have is actually a linear equation ok. Now, what if we have a non linear equation ok remember numerical methods are more powerful for non linear cases and all that actually all right. Now, let us see something like this f of x equal to 0 ok and you want to find out what is x equal to ok and again the similar motivation there like you can I can uh, partition these states whatever x dot equal to f of x u into two parts I still maintain that condition dimension of x is equal to dimension of u then in this case you will end up with like x dot equal to 0 if I want to address that question then I have this non linear this non linear equation now ok right. So, f c of x 0 u 0 equal to 0 that is the condition that I want to find out ok. No, that means, uh, no can I find out uh, some u 0 ok which will satisfy 
this equation u 0 can be a function of x 0 I mean that is that is ok. That means, if I know a particular number for x that is x 0, what is the particular number for u which will give me that and that is why this 0 0 notations are there actually ok. So, I will go back to this equation now f c is uh, of 0 ok, f c of u equal to 0 and try to find out what is u for that. That is the motivation why you want to address this, why you want to address this part of particular problem actually ok. This is just one of the examples why you need that you may need for many different uh, cases also actually ok. Now, we will start with the simple solution sort of idea. First, we will see what is the scalar. Uh, by the way, this has many, many uh, numerical methods available. Okay. One of that uh, which is popularly known is bisection method. That means, if you if you talk about a scalar expression here for example, and you tell okay, I have two guess values now, okay. then I uh, there is something called a bisection method I, uh, and there are uh, very, very, very other ideas as well actually. So, this is not what I am talking here is not an ex exhaustive uh, review of methods available. Okay. So, what I am really doing here is rather uh, talking about uh, what is called as Newton Robson method, which is which is very neat, it has its own uh, beauty basically and that is what is mostly used in practice. Okay. That is why I want to review this particular method of getting the solution actually. Okay. So, what you what you really want to find out in this case remember nonlinear equation solution will require some sort of iterative solution actually okay. that means, at one go you will not be able to find out, but you may need some couple of iterations before you arrive at the final solution actually. So, what is the idea here now let us say that we, we are having some x k value ok, some value for x k is already available and k can be 0 also that means, you can start with some initial guess. Okay, then if k is 1, 2, 3, 4, then you have already some iterated values available to you. Okay. Obviously, that is not the solution that is why you want to do iteration actually. That means, f of x k is not really 0. Okay. However, you want to find out a delta x k such that if I make x k plus delta x k, then f of x k plus delta x k is equal to 0. That is what that mean that means, if my delta x k is proper then x k plus delta x k will be a root of this equation actually yeah, that is the whole idea there. Now, I will interpret this f k uh, f of x k plus delta x k in Taylor series expansion and tell ok these are all higher order terms and all that I will not be interested in that I will just suppress that and I will just take the first order term up to first order term and this is what my equation actually remember this entire expression is 0 because that is supposed to be a root actually that is what you want to find a delta x k such that f of the x k plus delta x k equal to 0 basically ok. Right. So, that is your aim actually that is how you want to find a delta x k ok. That means, th this is equal to 0 up to that actually ok up to this term ok. Then uh, I can I can relate that ok delta x k this particular term is 0. So, hence this de del f by de I mean d f by d x evaluated at x k times delta x k this term whatever term is there is nothing but minus f of x k and assuming that this is f dash of x remember that evaluated at x k ok. So, assuming that that is non 0 I can do that actually right delta x k ok is nothing but this term ok this whatever term you see here that is nothing but delta x k actually ok this particular term is nothing but delta x k. Okay. So, if, I, if this is delta x k then uh, this is my what I, what I really wanted is uh, x k plus delta x k that is my x k plus 1 ok. So, this is uh, this is this this particular term what you see here ok is is x k plus 1 ok. That is why you f of x k plus 1 is 0 basically right that is what you wanted. So, this is uh, this is why uh, you will get uh, x k plus 1 is x k plus delta x k and del delta x k is nothing but that actually ok. So, x k x k plus 1 is equal to x k minus f of x k divided by f dash of x k ok. So, that is the al that is the algorithm and you keep on doing that until you get some some convergence that means, uh, you do not get too much I mean when much of improvement afterwards actually okay. that is up to that you have to do that and stop. Now, picturally let us see what is going on here ok. You have uh, some f of from f of x 
ok. Sum f of x uh, arbitrarily it is plotted something like that f of x equal to 0 and assuming that that is the 0 axis of course ok and it starts with 0 0 probably and then the obviously what you want you want this particular value ok this particular value ok this is your your root actually ok this is what you really want ultimately what you do not know the value to start with actually right. So, you start with some sort of a guess value ok. So, this is my guess value I will start with uh, some guess value let us say and then f, f of x is that much that is f of my f of x then f dash of x f dash of x is nothing but the slope actually evaluated at x i. So, that is the slope what is giving me actually right. So, if I compute this delta x i sort of thing f and if you see this is actually a linear equation ok. So, what you are doing here x i plus 1 is x i minus this term actually ok. And if you just carefully look at it it is a kind of a if you start with a this equation line equi equi I mean straight line equation and try to find out the interpretation the meaning of that that means I mean it all that it tells me that I I have a guess value I go to that particular point where it intersects this particular function then evaluate the slope and with that extension of the slope I will cut this x axis I mean this uh, and this x axis somewhere okay. and that is going to be my next iteration value. So, again I evaluate the function there I again take the local derivative extend that and wherever it cuts it is my x i plus 2 again I again I go there and then I will proceed further actually like that and ultimately I will converge there actually okay. so that is the interpretation of that actually. Multivariable case there is a similar extension you can do now if you want this f of x equal to 0 you tell ok I will uh, I will do the same exercise that means I will take uh, multivariable Taylor series expansion ok and then I will tell ok I mean in the higher order terms I will neglect and I found I want to find out uh, a delta x k in such a way that that x k plus 1 this is my x k plus 1 anyway ok ok this is my x k plus 1 that is going to be a root that means f of x k plus 1 is going to be 0 actually right. So, this entire thing what I see here I, I interpret that I will find delta x k in such a way that this is equal to 0 ok. Now, if that happens then I, I define this fellow as uh, a k plus 1 ok. I define this del f by del x evaluated at k is nothing but a k something like that. And then the equation tells me that a k times delta x k is nothing but negative of this particular thing f, f of x k and hence delta x k is nothing but a inverse a k inverse f k. And remember when you see whenever you see this kind of a thing ok you can use ok you can use Gaussian elimination. You can use Gauss elimination actually to co to compute that in a faster way. Then you can update ok and then you get x k plus 1 is x k plus delta x k ok. So, very very similar to what you have here ok instead of uh, divided by f that uh, 1 by like f dash of x k because matrix theory you cannot talk that uh, 1, o 1 over uh, matrix that is not defined. So, we will tell ok it is uh, negative of a k inverse multiplied by that that is the only difference actually otherwise it will continue and all these have the backbone of uh, I mean every all numerical method most of them will always rely on Taylor series expansion whether it is root finding whether it is Euler integration whether it is many many things will all rely on Taylor series expansion actually. Okay. So, all these uh, numerical methods uh, derive uh, the strength from Taylor series expansion really. All right. So the the algorithm is again same. You start with some guess value, and then compute delta x like that, delta x k like that, and then proceed your algorithm like that. Actually, okay. and remember, in MATLAB, those of you are using that, I mean, you will be using that for uh, for scalar thing. Okay, you don't have to do all this yourself. If you want, you can do it, do it. Otherwise, in MATLAB, there is a function called f zero. Okay, if you if you give if you use this f zero function it will try to find out a solution around the guess value that you have to give actually ok. This function will demand a function which is written and then there is a guess value it will demand actually. So, it will find out a solution around this guess value actually. Okay. Similarly, you can write uh, I mean this multi dimensional root I think to my knowledge is not available directly, but from optimization toolbox something is available otherwise you can write your uh, own function as also actually.
Okay, this the, this is the thing that you need to write anyway. So the Newton Raphson method algorithm sense you start with some guess value either you talk that is x zero or x one okay whatever it is and uh, MATLAB will start with x one the index zero is not defined in MATLAB anyway. So you start with some guess value x one and then uh, solve for delta x k and then update your x k plus one is like this actually okay and then you continue until convergence and convergence typically it is given either in terms of relative error or in terms of absolute error. Given a choice, relative error is is my first preference actually. I mean, first recommendation because your problem uh, relate that the tolerance value that you select, okay, whether here or there, it should not be problem dependent actually. Okay, it should be fairly independent. If you talk about one percent error, is one percent error whether you have a nano science problem or you have a rocket science problem, either way actually. So the in other words, the units can be very different, but the still the relative sense is still the one percent only. Actually. So that is why uh, most of the time I recommend relative error actually. Okay, and absolute errors are sometimes uh, uh, necessary because suppose you have this particular x k plus one, what you see here, okay, is zero. Okay, then there is a problem of division. So the entire okay, I'll, I'll continue with absolute error because I already have a physical idea of what these values are. So with that will help me in selecting a proper value for this uh, absolute error actually. Uh, that will be always my second recommendation. First recommendation is this one actually. Now let us see Newton Raphson method. How do you find that? You can find the root of the following equation. Let's say, okay. Then you start with some some x zero value as point zero two. Okay, that you can start with that. Okay, and then you tell okay, this is my x one. X one is nothing but x zero minus this. Okay, and then x two is that, and x three is that. You can continue, and you can see that there is some improvement here. So point zero eight to zero five. The three is I mean. 0 8 to 0 5 this is 0 0.03 sort of improvement here and then suddenly it is 0 0.01 improvement okay. and you do one or two more iteration it will converge actually okay. that is the method that is the thing. Okay. So, what is the beauty about this particular method why do you emphasize so much on this is primarily because uh, of this property actually. Uh, what it tells is uh, this particular method has something called quadratic convergence property. And that it uh, it means that actually that means e k plus one whatever e k e k I get at every instant okay these are all iteration values but correspondingly I can calculate an e one and e one is nothing but x one minus x zero here e two is x two minus x one like that actually e three is x three minus x two like that so if I calculate that way and then it will turn out that e k plus one is something like c times e k square actually okay and normally this e k if it is relative error typically. These are all less than one, right? E k is typically less than one, and then if it is less than one, E k square is still further less than one. I mean, it's very small value, and E k plus one will will be a function of uh, I mean, it's proportional to E k square actually. E k plus one is proportional to E k square. That means it will converge very fast actually. Okay, that is uh, that's called convergence pro quadratic convergence property actually. However, the, there are several problems here, and one of the problems it it really requires a good initial guess value in general, and that too if you, if you give a wrong guess value, it will converge to a wrong value actually. Okay. If there is a possibility of doing that. So, what are the problems of this method? First of all, we will see couple couple of issues here, and first thing first thing is that it, this particular fellow, I mean this Newton Raphson method, does not converge at inflection points actually in general. What is inflection point? All powers actually. If you have something like that, if you have x minus one whole cube, for example, it goes through. Remember, remember, it is a solution x equal to one. Okay, I mean, you are looking for the solution, but it will never converge actually at the, this point of time. It will, if you just do iteration starting from some guess value, you will see that is this is some convergence issues actually. And it turns out that if it is point of inflection, something like that, if it cuts nicely and go, it is fine. Point of inflection normally it has uh, some convergence issues actually. It will go close to that, but around that it will not converge actually. Okay. Root jumping can also happen. For example, if you take a sin x, sin x, you know several solutions are there. Okay, whatever solutions are there. Now suppose you start with this guess value somewhere. Okay. Then I mean you can you obviously what you intended you intended to find out some solution here. Okay, you didn't intend to find somewhere else actually. 
but remember this if you just take the local slope it will push you somewhere here again you take the local slope it will push you somewhere here again you take the local slope it will push you somewhere here I mean ultimately you will be able to locate 0 so okay, sin x equal to 0 okay, that is also a solution, but that is not the right solution okay, because you, st you started with this guess value with the hope that you will find out the solution okay. and one of these issues can be avoided by taking this uh, something uh, like a, uh, what is called learning rate actually. For example, x k plus 1 is equal to x k minus f of x k divided by f dash of x k that is what we discussed actually right. Instead of doing that you tell there is alpha I will multiply where alpha is a number which is less than 1 ok. So, if I select a small value obviously I will not jump here I will just I will not take this much step I will take another small step in this direction. So, I will be going here actually. So, instead of going over there this I will not go here but I will go here rather because I will not take this this particular jump ok. This the entire thing I will not take ok, but this alpha will give me this much only ok. Many of these numerical algorithms will have this uh, this alpha so term associated with that including optimization routines and all this is called learning rate actually ok. And we can probably select a particular appropriate value ok which will help us uh, eliminating the some of these uh, problems actually. Ok, so one uh, first thing is in, uh, it does not converge around inflection point, it does a, it does a root jumping problem. Third is there is oscillation problem ok. Remember this particular f of x has no real roots really because it does not touch the x axis, it just uh, goes uh, away from the 2 actually okay, there is no solution really. But uh, you are not you are blind to that and you are still wanted a solution I mean if you start with some some guess value it will I mean if you if you start with some guess value it will try to go there and then it will try to come some I mean this uh, this entire thing will go somewhere here actually okay. you started with let us say something like uh, 1 here ok I do not know whatever this one ok right and then it will try to kind of uh, kind of oscillate actually it will just keep on doing ok one will lead to other other will lead to there and things like that actually. And obviously, that is a very clear example here because in the in such situation you see that it is there is no root actually. So, you are just finding out uh, I mean you are, you are posing a wrong problem to the system actually. Anyway, it is also like a local minimum and maximum there is another issue that ok even if uh, it really touches the axis let us say ok then there is a problem also actually ok. Why? Because the derivative turns out to be 0 at some times. So, if, if you have this this function rather let us say touch this uh, axis I mean this somewhere it, uh, around 0 that means this plus 2 is not there ok. In that situation also what will happen is you, as you approach closer and closer and closer you will approach to that solution anyway. But once you approach close, close, closer to that solution, the slope becomes zero actually. So that f dash of x, okay, this particular thing, what you see here, okay, that will turn out to be zero, and hence you will jump it actually. Like you will come very close and then go back. Actually. That is where again this alpha term will help. If you have alpha term, it will not force you to go there actually. So, so sometimes these adaptive learning rates are also nice. You start with a high learning rate after a couple of iterations you reduce this value to a smaller value smaller value like that actually ok. So, that way that way uh, your initially you will not march slow you will march rather relatively fast, but uh, towards convergence you will also not diverge actually you will uh, will stay there actually that means. Now, again division by 0 is very apparent because whenever there is a, a slope 0 ok then there is a division by 0 problem which will not be nice either actually. There is another problem that if you are at, at the solution point is f dash of x is not 0, but it is unbounded that means infinity. Then also there is a problem actually it is a very counterintuitive, but it is actually there is a problem we can verify that with this example ok square root of x if you see that then uh, uh, this uh, f dash of x star f dash of x remember what is f dash of x. Okay, f dash of x is actually 1 by 2 square root of x right. So, if the solution turns out to be 0. So, this uh, that around 0 it is actually infinity ok. So, then uh, this there is a problem there actually you can see that there are many. So, that means there are many uh, many many issues there for Newton Raphson method, but if it uh, none of these issues are actually there or you find some some solution like learning rate fixing and things like that 
then it actually converges very fast that is the beauty part of it itself. Okay. Go to the next concept many times we need a numerical differentiation. The numerical differentiation we know this is the definition we can either define it that way for a difference way that means limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus uh, f of x divided by delta x or in a backward difference sense that means f of x minus f of x minus delta x divided by delta x okay. or you can find it in a central difference way you can take positive you can evaluate the function little positive then little negative take the difference divided by 2 delta x rather. Okay. So, numerically if you want to really approximate that okay, well you have an x 0 value. Okay. So, you take evaluate the function around x 0 either in a positive side or a negative side or both ways. Okay. Then it simply comes from definition actually as long as you take delta x uh, small values if I eliminate this uh, limit condition that is all you are doing here numerical approximation. In the limiting sense delta x has to be very close to 0. But instead of that, you will put a small finite value and still evaluate the derivative actually. That is called numerical approximation actually. So, forward difference is like that, backward is difference like that, and central difference is like that. And it turns out that if you use either forward difference or backward difference, the error is of order delta x. But if you use central difference, the error will be of, I mean, this order delta x square actually. Okay. So, obviously, central difference is better in accuracy sense point of view. But uh, sometimes you will be required to use forward difference or backward difference. Like uh, for example, if you start with grid point 1, then the numbers are available only at grid point 2, then grid point minus 1 it is not available, then you, are, you have to take forward difference anyway. Okay, like that actually. But wherever it is possible to take central difference, the, my suggestion is to kind of opt for that actually, because the error is lesser in that. Next concept is obviously numerical integration. This is this is all about numerical differentiation. And now numerical integration sense, suppose you have a curve like this, whatever curve is there, I want to evaluate this uh, this integral. That means area under the curve actually. Okay. And one popular way of doing that is using trapezoidal rule. Okay. As one one more uh, way of doing that is also there. For example, if somebody wants to do that, they can evaluate this integral, this area, and this area like that actually. Okay. And then this area like that. So, that means you can simply hold the values of the grid point and then try to find out okay, you can whatever f 1 value at point x 1 you can just simply hold that and find out this i 1 actually under that forget this inaccuracy here whatever happens here. And similarly, you can try to evaluate this entire area even if you add some little more area actually. Okay. So, that is one way of doing that, but uh, little better way of doing that is I have these two point this function values uh, anyway available to me this grid point values are also available to me. So, why do not I in, uh, evaluate using this uh, trapezoidal and this trapezoid formula actually which is there. Instead of doing that, I am interpreting as something like uh, okay, I will not do this, I will just take out and take I will evaluate this this area rather actually whatever I want. Similarly, I will carry on with I 2 and things like that actually. So, that happens to be better obviously and that is doable. Okay. So, the formula sense okay, I want to have this entire integration. So, what is uh, I have to take uh, summation of uh, all this i 1 y 2 up to i n minus 1 and i n actually all these areas whatever stripes I get little little stripes I get those stripes I have to integrate I mean uh, I have to evaluate and then take summation of that actually. So, that is what I am doing here and in assuming a uniform grid that means delta x remains same you can uh, probably do that actually. Okay, delta x i 1 is nothing but f 0 plus f 1 this is the trapezoidal formula for i 1. And similarly, for i 2 that is the trapezoidal formula and you carry on with all that then it interestingly turns out that if I take delta x by 2 common then it is f 0 by 2 in the beginning and f n by 2 at the end and all other things are simply summations actually. Okay. So, all right. So, if I if I take these two inside and then take delta x common here, then area and that by trapezoidal rule is given like this actually. And also remember there is a small comment out here that if you do numerical differentiation, it is always error amplifying, whereas numerical integration is always error soothing actually smoothing. Okay. Because uh, see if you do this numerical differentiation these formulas, suppose you have a little error, let us say the function has not nice nicely this way. But the function has something like small error actually, 
that means the function is something like not this way but something like this okay so now what will telling if, if i evaluate a slope here okay i evaluate a uh, okay all right i will evaluate a slope here it will be like this and i evaluate the very next time it is like this actually okay remember the values are quite different actually one is almost like plus infinity other is minus infinity okay so that way the even the values of the functions are very small the value at the slope at here what i am evaluating and value of the slope here are very very different actually that means uh, the differences in operator is uh, highly error amplifying so if you really have a noisy data or directly experimental data things like that never ever do numerical differentiation directly on those data that's that's a strong recommendation rather however if you do numerical integration with respect to this and with respect to an average curve let's say that's an average curve okay so there will be some area which is getting ideal some area which is getting subtracted so you don't have to really know what is the exact area value under those noisy data but if you do the integration with it is it is rather okay instead it will try to smooth out the error else actually so if you have to if you generate a raw data set using your experiment and things like that to do the uh, the differentiation or integration do not do numerical differentiation okay. you can probably fit a polynomial and then take differentiation on that polynomial the, that is actually a recommendation instead of directly taking numerical derivatives like this actually okay. all right so these are numerical integration then the next concept that is needed for our uh, kind of thing is actually ordinary differential equation solution you know remember many many times we will do dx dot equal to f of xu and you want to integrate those equations and then find out uh, what is the solution given a u basically okay so now some of this concept what uh, before you do that okay the ordinary differential equations in general can be written in some equation like that okay it is called ordinary because it has only one independent variable namely time here okay if you have more than that you can talk about pds partial differential equations actually we'll not be worried about those things here we'll worried about ordinary differential equation here okay and uh, there is a something called concept called order and degree okay order of the differential equation is the highest order derivative in f and uh, well not really uh, f actually i think it is n uh, x okay highest order derivative of x of t okay so that is uh, what you see here is the order of that and the uh, degree uh, okay degree is the exponent of the highest order derivative actually okay that means uh, if you have d square by uh, d square x by dt square to the power q okay then it is the degree 3 basically okay so this in general is a, is a nonlinear equation so it can happen the nonlinearity can come in uh, higher order derivatives as well actually so you take the highest order derivative and then see what is the power of that actually and most of our problem the highest order derivative will contain degree 1 Okay, so that way we are uh, will always work most of the time will work with uh, degree one actually, but order can be arbitrary. That means you can talk about second order system, third order system, nth order system like that actually. Okay. So for a small example, you can see this kind of thing. The degree is four, okay, because this the okay first order order is the highest order derivative which is three, okay, and uh, this particular term has degree I mean this um, exponent four, so that is degree four actually. These are simple the uh, simple concept here. Okay. All right. What is the solution of ODE then? A problem of uh, a problem involving ODE is not completely specified by the equation alone. Actually, okay. You have to talk about some boundary condition, namely the initial conditions. And typically, you don't uh, call that as initial condition because the condition can be given at any point of time. You can still integrate either forward or backward. So, it need not be only given at t zero. It can be given at t f also. but it can be given any point of time really you can you can integrate the equations both forward as well as backward using negative delta t that's also okay so if you talk about an initial value problem especially then the boundary conditions are given at initial time ti okay. otherwise okay 
and if it is all the initial all the conditions are given at any point of time okay either including tf that is still called as initial value problem only okay otherwise it is something like split boundary conditions like partly uh, part of the boundary conditions given at one point of time and uh, another part of the conditions given at some other point of time and these problems are still possible to solve but these are um, complex to solve that means uh, it will require something like some algorithms to solve two point boundary value problems and optimal control theory will rely some of these things because optimal in optimal control will invariably be required to solve two point boundary value problems actually but uh, this particular class will talk about initial value problems only that means all the conditions are given at one point of time then how do you get that okay so numerical solution to initial value problems this is the problem eventually okay dx by dt is uh, t x of t x of t0 is x0 and remember this this can be in general okay this x is actually a vector x okay that means it is actually Uh, x1 x2 x3 okay all these components are there for you actually okay so this is not necessarily a scalar equation this is a vector equation all these n n equations are there x1 dot x2 dot up to xn dot with all initial conditions available okay then how do you get a solution that means what do you mean by a solution i want to find out what is my okay i i know x of t0 i know that i want to find out x of t1 x of t to and things like that whatever time x x of t n i can still continue further i remember t1 is nothing but t0 plus delta t okay and t2 is equal to t1 plus delta t like that actually okay so if i all right let us do that okay delta t like that actually that and this this delta t is need not be same it can be different also delta t1 delta t2 like that you can also do that actually most of the time delta t is taken as same actually so the first uh, first approach what is uh, very simple rather is called uh, euler integration in fact okay so wha what do we do here okay quickly we'll go through that all the numerical integration methods will rely on what is called as tangent slope method actually i mean normally it will try to Approximate the fun the curve. So remember, x dot equal to f of uh, t x. So that means this is actually a function for which you can evaluate the slope at any point of uh, any point of uh, that uh, x zero value. Suppose you know x zero, x one, or whatever it is, and uh, corresponding t's are known to you, then the function is completely known to you uh, as a function of t and x actually. So you can eventually take. I mean, you can take derivatives of that function and then take okay this. Uh, Uh, the slope and uh, slope of that line and things like that yeah, and you have to exploit that that means using that equation of the line slope of the line things like that you you use that information to predict the next value of the solution actually okay so that is what you'll do and very quickly see the euler method if you have dx by dt equal to f of tx again this x is vector here okay that means uh, with x of 0 equal to b then at any any start uh, point of time whatever whatever point is suppose i know the solution for tn already i want to find out for tn plus 1 actually so at t equal to tn uh, dx by dt i can go back to the my my differentiation formula okay and uh, use this forward difference method i mean approximation right that is my dx by dt so i can use that xn plus 1 minus xn by delta t that's forward difference and this is nothing but f of t n x n okay so using for a difference formula i can do that and then you simply solve this x n plus 1 okay this x plus 1 plus 1 turn out to be like that and remember x do i mean f f n plus 1 what you hear is nothing but x n dot actually so that means if you x n plus 1 is equal to x n plus delta t into x n dot also you can sometimes people write that way with that thing that xn dot is nothing but f of tn xn okay so if i know a tn xn value i can calculate this f of xn i mean that is because this f is known to me i can calculate that and then plug in this formula to get what is my xn plus 1 actually this is very easy rather so euler method is extremely easy uh, compared to all other methods and uh, we, we use that in systems theory many times but then uh, with the uh, i mean conscious uh, information that in euler integration is not very accurate actually 
Okay, for for getting good accuracy, you have to use delta t very small. Because you, if you do Taylor series expansion, that is that tangent slope approach and things like that. In Taylor series expansion of this particular function f of t x, you are only retaining first order derivatives actually. The all other terms you are throwing out. And because of that, the accuracy is more and more better and better, provided delta t is very small actually. And if delta t is very small, you are going to take very baby steps. Very small steps actually, which is typically not good in control theory either actually, because uh, sometimes you may be caught with the trivial delta t. For example, del delta t is 10 to the power minus 6, as one microsecond, and within that uh, one microsecond control control of the time is extremely small. And uh, in my knowledge, I have never seen a control of the uh, frequency of that small uh, delta t being my one microsecond. I have never seen. It's all like millisecond level. I've seen actually. Okay. So, you cannot do that uh, if that problem demands that actually. The second issue is suppose you want to do it in a faster way, tell the okay, you can argue that uh, all other numerical method we are going to see one more by the way uh, is uh, it will demand little more computation for every iteration. This is the smallest amount of computation by the way. So, computational advantage I will have. However, suppose the other method gives me relatively larger delta t, okay, I can use that because accuracy will be high. And here the accuracy is being less, I have to use a lot of these grid points actually. So, I have to repeat this computation so many times before I go from here to here, whereas in the other method I can go directly there actually. That means, even if I am using a little more computation for every step, I have to work with less number of steps actually. Okay. So, these are all uh, I mean kind of advantage drawbacks things like that actually. Another advantage of Euler method is because the, the formula turns out to be rather easy, you can do further algebra rather easily. For example, if you discretize this equation this way, this is the discretized form uh, of this uh, continuous equation, then you can talk uh, various derivatives of this. For example, you, you can talk about uh, let us say del, uh, okay, I, I some, sometimes we require to take derivatives of the like del x n plus 1 divided by del x, uh, okay, this is n plus 1, okay divided by del x n. Suppose, you want to take that. Okay. Then, using this formula, it is rather easy actually, because f n is, is this way and you can take out all the derivatives uh, I mean uh, in a long hand formula basically, close form formula that will not be difficult. So, there are uh, advantages drawbacks with this Euler method. Uh, you, my suggestion is just use it cautiously actually, do not jump into that. Some useful comments, I have already told among those, uh, Euler integration is uh, uh, this uh, error is of order of delta t square, it is not very highly accurate. So, small step size is necessary okay. and this can come in conflict with computational load advantage actually. Every, every, uh, every grid point you are doing less computation, but you have to take several grid points because delta t you have to, you will be required to select much lesser actually. So, that way it is uh, not that advantage actually. But in general, it has computational load. It has also like closed form uh, further algebra uh, is possible in closed form like that actually. The, the another thing that comes to method is Runge-Kutta method and then Runge-Kutta methods uh, are of various orders. It can talk about uh, second order Runge, Runge-Kutta, third order, fourth order like that actually, which is very popular in uh, systems theory and most of the differential equation solution numerical, numerical solution is fourth order actually. And fourth order solution essentially the concept is like that derivation I will not give here. I will talk about uh, like uh, uh, some function okay, that f of uh, t n x n is something like this let us say and you have some value like that here. Then it attempts to find some approximate slopes here actually point number 1 you already have the slope. It predicts what is the slope at point number 2, point number 3, point number 4 and then tries to kind of fit a polynomial in between that actually. Okay. And then evaluates that he was using this polynomial, you will be able to kind of uh, march ahead with the solution here with much more accuracy actually. That is the philosophy. Okay. More um, uh, algebra part and all you can see a numerical methods book actually. Okay. So, ultimately what it tells me is I start with this uh, this series of computation, I start with k 1 rather which is simply the function evaluation there, whatever fun, fun function I have. Then using that function value, whatever function value k 1. Okay, I will be able to calculate a k 2 actually okay. and then using this k 2, I will calculate this k 3, using this k 3, I will calculate this k 4 and using all this k 1 to k 4, I will just uh, try to 
and you get delta t over 6 and then average out all these actually k 1 plus 2 k 2 plus 2 k 3 plus k 4. So, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 that is 6 so I divide by 6 sort of thing. So, this entire formula the final formula x i plus 1 is given something like this actually. Okay. And uh, essentially it turns out that, that uh, Runge-Kutta fourth order Runge-Kutta algorithm has uh, uh, error delta t to the power fifth. Okay. That means, it is highly accurate actually compared to that. Remember, Euler integration had uh, accuracy of the order of delta t square only. Now, that square has gone to power fifth actually. Okay. So, that is why it is much more accurate actually. Okay. So, uh, and the second comment is this method essentially uses a fourth order power series approximation. Remember, Taylor I mean that uh, Euler integration uses only linear term. Now, this one uses up to fourth order power series approximation in Taylor series to come up with this algorithm. Again, details of that uh, is not here. You can see some numerical numerical methods book actually. Okay. And this particular algorithm is popularly called as RK4 method, fourth order Runge-Kutta method actually. This is very popular in, in MATLAB. You can use all this and probably for Euler you do not need any integration formula. I mean, it is just uh, that uh, that formula is so simple that you do not need any integration form. I mean, any routine for that actually primarily. Okay, because the, this integration formula you can simply write it long end actually. Okay. Yeah, once you evaluate this f of x actually, then it is easy to just plug in there. So, they do not need a formula per se, but this algorithm requires little bit of, of uh, evaluation of computation, I mean little bit of sequential computation. So, the formula is available there and uh, in MATLAB you can see some of this, this is something called O D 2 3 that is the function. Okay. And there is another function which is called ODE45. Okay. And ODE23, this is uh, what is called as RK2 method, okay. second order Runge-Kutta method, and this is this will give you RK4 method, okay. so fourth order Runge-Kutta method actually. Okay. Essentially, both are similar functions, but with difference that these are there. And by default, whatever is there in MATLAB, it is uh, what is called as adaptable step size. Okay. That means, your delta t that you are using does not necessarily remain constant actually and it is adapted provided suppose you have a function something like this okay. and then you have you have this is this for here the slopes are not changing fast, here the slopes are not rather changing that fast, but here in this segment it is changing rapidly actually. Okay. So, it will try to see this where the slope changes happen in a rapid way and if the slope change, change of slope is high then correspondingly it will adjust your delta t small actually remember this is your delta t ok. The delta t is small here this delta t can be large here ok. So, this adaptation of delta t happens uh, in an implicit way inside the algorithm in RK4 and uh, RK I mean this ODE45 routines and all that. But most of our type of applications we do not uh, we are ok with the constant step size. So, you can probably write this function ourselves also many times and then see what is the delta t that you can select actually and constant step size is also very good for implementation concern. You do not have to monitor what is the delta t. Every control cycle update, guidance cycle update like that, that is fixed by some some number. So, you start uh, using that particular number in a constant step size way actually. So, that is some of these numerical methods are useful here. So, with that I will uh, probably stop here this particular class. And you see that near root finding both in linear equation, nonlinear equation, numerical derivative and integration as well as numerical integration of differential equation. That is all we discussed in this class. These are all useful in our uh, control theory and uh, many of these uh, practical uses implementation will come from your uh, experience as you work with different different problems actually. I hope this will be useful in your further exercise. Thank you.